This is Mac OS Ken. Get ready to return things. Some do it yourself and don't do it news. And Apple's first or second move to monetize AI. It is Monday, the 11th of November, 2024. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Incogni, helping you take back your personal data. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCAN at incogni.com slash macOSCAN. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash Mac OS can. In one of the surest signs of the approaching holiday season, Apple has extended the window for returning things given to you at the holidays, or things you give to people. While Apple's standard returns policy allows people to return products within 14 days, that usually gets extended through the holiday season, and this year is no exception. A piece from Cult of Mac has Apple saying that eligible products at the Apple Store online that are received between the 8th of November and the 25th of December may be returned through the 8th of January, 2025. Caveats aplenty, though. This is a major corporation we're talking about. iPhones bought carrier finance through T-Mobile or Verizon are not eligible for extended returns. It is only the dates that have changed. All other terms and conditions provided under the standard returns policy are still applicable. And all purchases made after the 25th of December are subject to the standard return policy, according to the company, which totally makes sense since the 8th of January is 14 days after Christmas. Boy, takes the happy straight out of happy holidays, doesn't it? A do-it-yourself story and a don't-do-it-yourself story on the to-do list. A piece from Mac Rumors says Apple has started making available tools and parts for fixing models in the iPhone 16 line. That runs the gamut from the entry-level iPhone 16 through iPhone 16 Pro Max. According to the report, there are parts and tools available for repairing or replacing an iPhone 16's display, battery, rear camera system, True depth camera for face ID, back glass, bottom and top speakers, main microphone, and more. Toolkits are available to rent for seven days for all four iPhone 16 models, with U.S. pricing set at $49 for each kit. Info on how to affect the necessary repairs has been out for a while, actually since late September, according to the report. On the two don't list. A piece from Apple Insider says the new Mac Mini line features a slotted and removable solid-state drive, but there seems to be little point in you removing it. Though the board on which the storage sits is not soldered in place, those boards are not available just anywhere. In fact, the indication is they are available nowhere, as far as the average consumer is concerned. It is a custom Apple part, says the report, so it's intended for in-house repairs. Of course, one could try desoldering the solid-state drive from the card and replacing that with more memory, though Apple Insider says it is a risky and difficult task to accomplish. The site holds out zero hope for a user-upgradable storage card and suggests anybody wanting to add storage to an existing machine consider an external drive instead. Remember the story a few weeks back that had technology from TSMC turning up in things made by Chinese tech company Huawei? It looks like that may be biting China in the backside. In mid-October, the information ran a piece saying Apple's chip-making partner was suspected of having supplied 5G and AI chips to Huawei using U.S.-made equipment. To say that that would be a no-no is an understatement, though it seemed very unlikely that TSMC would have made such a move knowingly. The information said it was likely that orders were placed in the names of intermediary companies, which was something TSMC still should have caught. In fact, it said it would be taking its own steps to determine whether its checks failed 
a move that seemed to pay off roughly a week later. That's when Apple Insider ran a piece that had TSMC notifying the U.S. that Huawei had secretly tried to buy AI chips from it. Citing a Reuters report, Apple Insider said TSMC told the U.S. Commerce Department that a customer had placed an order for chips that seemingly breached U.S. sanctions. The customer attempted to order a chip that was similar in design to the Ascend 910B, a processor designed by Huawei. That brings us to a piece run Friday by the Financial Times, highlighted by Engadget. That has TSMC suspending the production of advanced AI chips for Chinese companies beginning today. If a Chinese company orders products that fall within that category, the report says they'll have to go through an approval process that will likely involve the U.S. government. The report says the new policy could be a direct result of its discovering that Huawei had used its chips in AI accelerators without TSMC's knowledge. More news in a moment, but first a word from today's sponsor, Incogni, helping you take back your personal data. Information about us is everywhere. That is a 21st century fact of life. Here's the thing, though. Companies are compiling that information and selling it to other companies. Company 1 knows a little bit about you. Company 2 knows a little bit. Company 3 buys info from companies 1 and 2, and suddenly, Company 3 knows a lot about us. And they are selling that info or sometimes just losing it to bad guys. This trade in our information that we're barely aware of makes us the target of spam, robocalls, even identity theft. Blunt that threat with Incogni. They know who these data brokers are and how to get our info removed. And they don't stop, since a lot of times the data brokers do not stop. Since I started with Incogni, they've gotten over 120 data brokers to remove my data, saving me more than 92 hours I'd have spent trying to do it myself, if I even had any idea how. Incogni takes the hassle out of protecting our data by automatically contacting data brokers on our behalf to get our data pulled. I am a fan of what they do. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSKEN at incogni.com slash macOSKEN. They've got plans for individuals as well as plans to cover friends and family, and they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I-N-C-O-G-N-I. Join the huge community of people who have taken control of their personal data with Incogni. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCAN at incogni.com slash macOSCAN. Since Apple first announced Apple Intelligence, financial analysts and investors have wondered how Apple would go about monetizing it. Oh, sure, it might sell more compatible iPhones, iPads, and Macs, but how might it make money on the service itself? 9to5Mac has spotted the first way, one that I think we suspected was coming, but is now confirmed. Due out next month iOS 18.2 will bring Siri integration with ChatGPT, or vice versa. That'll be free of charge to the user. However, there is a ChatGPT paid service. According to the report, the iOS 18.2 beta has Apple offering ChatGPT Plus as an optional upgrade. The piece assumes that Apple will get a commission for any subscription started through Apple, The same way it does from Netflix, or used to, Spotify, or used to, and Disney Plus, or used to. But it won't just be ChatGPT. If you're using the iOS 18.2 beta, 9to5Mac says you'll notice that the area where ChatGPT is configured is in the category called extensions, as in more than one extension. With each new provider added, the piece says, 
Apple can rack up a cut of the subscription revenue those plans provide. As I say, I think we knew that this was somewhere between a possibility and a plan. It'll be interesting to see how OpenAI and others are able to incentivize subscriptions. It'll also be interesting to see whether they're able to incentivize subscriptions. Green bubbles are green bubbles and blue bubbles are blue bubbles. But at least reactions are coming through for each the way God intended. According to a piece from my download blog, when an iPhone owner running iOS 18.1 receives an emoji reaction from their Android counterpart, the selected emoji will appear in line with the message bubble. Before the change, emoji reactions appeared as a separate line. I've been in a group chat with five or six people for the past year, two of whom have Android phones. One's about to switch, I think, while the other will apparently die on that hill. I don't really care about the green bubble thing. I mean, it's kind of unsightly, but who cares? What would drive me bug, though, was when one of the Android peeps would like something, because what you got was a green bubble that said, so-and-so liked a message, or laughed at a message, or words to that effect. It was so annoying, I pretty much started not seeing it as a form of mental self-defense. So I didn't even realize, yeah, this is a thing that is happening now. The emoji still turns up in a green bubble, but it's a little green bubble, right next to where the usual ha-ha or thumbs up or hearts go. The piece says it's unclear which side, Google or Apple, made what change, but the change has been made. Making messaging better. Making it a little bit easier to be green. And finally today, Apple likely to announce Final Cut Pro update this week. That is part of a headline from Mac Rumors. In its announcement video for the new Mac Mini last month, the piece says Apple teased an upcoming version of Final Cut Pro for the Mac... Apple will likely announce the update during the annual Final Cut Pro Creative Summit, which begins this Wednesday. The conference is held in association with Apple, and attendees will be visiting Apple Park on the first day. Well, ooh la la. The piece also lists likely feature updates for the app, but I'm not going to go into those for a couple of reasons. First, they're only anticipated, not definite. And second... This is not a Final Cut Pro show, assuming they do become definite. I'm probably still not going to go into them that much. We'll see whether they actually happen. And how big they are. And how slow the other news is that day. Hey, don't forget today is Veterans Day, and Apple Watch wearers can earn an award for it. As it has done for several years now, the Cupertino company will give participants a virtual medallion and animated stickers for messages if they do any workout for 11 minutes or more recorded either in the workout app or any app that adds workouts to health. I plan to spend those 11 minutes thinking about two family members in particular. My great uncle, who, at 15 years of age, lied about his age so that he could fight fascism in the Pacific during World War II, and my grandfather, who fought fascism from a bomber over Germany during World War II. That's back when we thought being anti-fascist was cool. They both made it home. They were both troubled men, but they were great in very different ways. I wish they were still around. I'd like to thank them for the extra time they bought us. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Incogni. Get 60% off an annual plan with code macOSCAN at incogni.com slash macOSCAN. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash macOSCAN. 
advertising handled by Backbeat Media. Online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macoscan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Leonard likes this post.